For me, one of the most memorable scenes in recent years comes from the opening act of Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. A German soldier conducts a search of a house suspected of hiding Jews. Where does the hawk look? In today's deep dive, we're going to unpack the creative choices that Tarantino makes to keep the scene interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to the Studio Binder channel. We've got more deep dives into your favorite movies, as well as dozens of great videos on filmmaking and production. Let's dive into Inglorious Bastards. First, a bit of backstory. The film begins with a farmer and his family in Nazi-occupied France. They're working outside a little farmhouse when a small motorcade pulls up. And SS Colonel Hans Landa introduces himself. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer, Monsieur Lapadit. Je suis le Colonel SS Hans Landa. Then our scene begins. The scene begins with rigid symmetry. Immediately, we align with the farmer and his family. The first viewpoint here is between two of the daughters, as if we're standing with them. When we get a reverse shot, it seems like the view has rotated a full 180 degrees. This square-on framing feels very limiting. It traps us. The visual scheme aligns us with them emotionally. Here, the camera crabs left to reframe on Landa as he crosses the room. Colonel SS Hans Landa, mademoiselle. He is in full control of this encounter. Je vous en prie. Assez you. Here again, the camera moves to follow Landa. It's a subtle pan to the right. But it reminds us, Landa controls this scene. Puisque nous sommes sur une exploitation laitière, je suppose sans risque de me tromper que vous avez du lait? Oui. Alors, je préfère du lait. Très bien. Tu veux bien les fermer la fenêtre, s'il te plaît? The next change we'll see is a subtle one. We start with the old angle. A close-up glance clues us to an unspoken understanding between the farmers about what's really going on. So, when we cut back to a medium shot of Landa, it's actually different. Merci. It's a low-angle shot, framing Landa as a more powerful, perhaps more intimidating figure. The key to these angle changes is that they parallel changes in the tone of the scene. Je vous en prie, venez me rejoindre à votre table. And we soon come to our next change of angles. The farmer comes to sit at the table and the camera pans right and reframes for a two-shot. Monsieur Lapadite, vu ce dont nous avons à discuter, il serait préférable de discuter en privé. You'll notice a bunch of long, static takes in this scene. They're also part of Tarantino's strategy to draw out the tension. Charlotte, tu veux bien venir descendre dehors? Le colonel et moi, on a deux, trois mois à se dire. With the farmer's daughters leaving, the purpose of the conversation becomes clear, and the tone of the scene shifts. Of course, the camera angles shift too. Here we are, medium wide, about to settle into a classic Tarantino esque conversation where Landa verbally outmaneuvers the poor farmer. It's quite a long take, and it serves as a master shot. Continuer à ne parler si peu convenablement ne ferait que me gêner. Cependant, je crois savoir que vous parlez en anglais tout à fait correct, n'est-ce pas? In addition to the master, we have our over-the-shoulder medium shot of the farmer, and the corresponding reverse shot over the shoulder and medium of Landa. It's a textbook conversation scene with the camera roughly at eye level and the characters simply chatting. Je vous demande la permission de passer à l'anglais pour le reste de la conversation. Certainement. Well, I'm very familiar with you and your family. I have no way of knowing if you are familiar with who I am. When Landa begins to press the farmer with his questions, the angle on the farmer shifts slightly. We're a little closer, and notably, Landa is not in the frame. By framing Landa out, Tarantino gives us a more intimate view of the farmer's sense of isolation and vulnerability. He's alone here, which means he's in danger. Please tell me what you've heard. I've heard that the Führer has put you in charge of running up the Jews left in France. And soon we cut to Landa in a single as well. We're committed to the conversation. The geography of the space has been established, so we get these more intimate, direct angles. The master two shot, the two over-the-shoulder shots, and the two singles are simply classical Hollywood coverage. 
Just about any conversation seen in a mainstream film is shot in this way. The reason is simple. It provides editorial protection for the performances. Before the occupation, there were four Jewish families in this area, all dairy farmers like yourself. Before we get to the next significant angle change, I want to point out this moment. Now, according to these papers, all the Jewish families in this area have been accounted for, except the Dreyfuses. The camera doesn't reframe. According to these papers... Once again, Tarantino insists that Landa, and only Landa, control the scene. No one else can motivate the camera to move. At least not yet. This classical coverage continues for more than three and a half minutes. And then Tarantino finally gives us an actual close-up. And look, the camera moves to follow the farmer's actions. The farmer's trying to give confident, believable answers. He's trying to take control of the scene. And for a moment, Tarantino lets us believe that he's done just that. But the camera movement ends with the SS officer's hat in the foreground. Landa is still in charge. At this point, the scene has run for six and a half minutes. Tarantino knows it's time for a change. We're back in a two-shot, but the angle is different than the two-shot that began the conversation. The camera tracks left in a circle around our characters. How old is Bob? 13, 31. The move is entirely unmotivated within the frame. By incorporating an unmotivated camera move, Tarantino reminds us that we're in a storyteller's hands. In this case, he needs us to remember that because there's an important piece of the story that he's about to share. We get a cutaway of Landa's notes, then this shot. Shoshana was uh, 18 or 19. The farmer in profile, somewhat from behind. The camera sinks. Again, an unmotivated camera move and drops through the floorboards. With this revelation, we suddenly understand the farmer's tension. One of Tarantino's unique strengths is understanding when and how to make the camera, and through it, the storyteller, conspicuous. Ah! Our entire perspective on this scene has just changed. So when we return to the main set, Tarantino provides us with a new angle on the action. Another lengthy establishing shot. Note that the farmer is on the right and Landa is on the left, much like in most of the scene. But then we cut into this low angle two shot. It crosses the 180 degree line. It's a disorienting new angle and it's not accidental. We're meant to feel a bit on edge here. Are you aware of the nickname the people of France have given me? I have no interest in such things. But you're aware of what they call me. I'm aware. What are you aware of? That they call you the joint, huh? Precisely. Once again, we have classical coverage, but the singles here are profile shots. The feature that makes me such an effective hunter of the Jews is, as opposed to most German soldiers, I can think like a Jew. Now that we know about the people under the floor, we're outsiders in the conversation, looking in on it from the side. We even get another cutaway below the floorboards, a reminder that we're outside of the scene looking in. The shock of the revelation of who's under the floor, combined with these new angles, is enough to sustain our attention through another four minutes of dialogue. If a rat were to walk in here right now as I'm talking, would you greet it with a source of your delicious milk? Probably not. I didn't think so. But Tarantino understands that four minutes is a lot of screen time. So he throws in yet another visual modulation. When Landa pulls out his ridiculous pipe, the angle crosses the 180 degree line. This new two-shot refreshes our weary eyes while the pipe releases some of our pent-up tension. My job dictates. That I must have my men enter your home. And conduct a thorough 
thorough search before I can officially cross your family's name off my list. But this tonal shift to absurdity is not going to last. This two shot leads into these two close ups. First, on Landa, the camera dollies in slowly, dialing up the tension. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? And the reverse shot on the farmer does the same thing. Yes. Notice that we're looking them both in the face here. Tarantino wants us thrust back into their emotional moment, not observers on the outside, but right there in the space between them, in the middle of this stare down. Point out to me the areas where they're hiding. The dolly moves progress until both close-ups are about as tight as they can get. Then we get another 180 degree reversal. This new angle sets up the final traditional coverage setup of the scene. It's a wide two shot. And when Landa walks towards the window, it also serves as a sort of over the shoulder. Notably, we've returned to a hard right angle here. The camera is perpendicular to the far wall. We're trapped just like the farmer is trapped, just like in the beginning of the scene. The reverse shot shows the farmer isolated, weak, and hemmed in by the slope of the stairs behind him. Landa, whose hat remains in the foreground, has won. Monsieur Lapadite, je vous remercie pour le nez, pour votre hospitalité. Il me semble que nous en avons terminé. With the conversation over, Tarantino breaks away from classical dialogue coverage, and we get a flurry of dramatic angles. The camera starts low to the ground, featuring the floorboards that no longer protect those hiding below. And when the shooting starts, we see it from above, the floorboards serving as a visual proxy for the victims below. I hear it. Landa, interestingly, is just as menacing in high angle as he is in low angle, perhaps because, again, those floorboards and what they represent. With Shoshana's escape, we finally leave the house, and the rest of the movie kicks into gear. It's extremely difficult to shoot a long conversation scene and make it effective. We've seen Tarantino achieve it here with relatively few tricks. There's very little camera movement, very little flashy editing. Next time you're storyboarding or shot listing a long scene, look at how that scene progresses and find ways to change your camera angles at the scene's inflection points. And when you're ready to shot list, don't forget to make Studio Binder your go-to shot listing and production planning tool. That's it for today's deep dive. If there are other great scenes you'd like us to explore together, let me know in the comments. Until next time, keep seeing great films and break a lens. I think this just might be my masterpiece.